today's video we're going to take a look at integration of Cisco ICE with Cisco Duo for device administration. When looking at the CCIE security blueprint this particular demonstration will map to 4.16 integration of ICE with multi-factor authentication. However, I've put another point in there that calls out that it doesn't specifically mention Cisco Duo but it does in 4.17 which is the uh, the next task if you like on the uh, CCI security blueprint so um, you know feel free to play around with different multi-factor authentication products but in this demonstration today we'll focus specifically on Cisco Duo um, and it makes sense because we are uh, looking at trying to uh, complete the CCIE security, which is a Cisco focused or product focused uh, exam. So when we, a few points here. So when we look at the ICE and Duo integration for device administration, um, Duo gives you the ability to protect applications that are authenticated using Cisco ICE. Um, I've put a little note there just to say that all applications may not support all types of integrations so do always check the Duo documentation which is quite good actually um, you know everything from installation and getting set up to support etc it's um, really detailed so again do check the documentation I think it's duo.com forward slash docs an authentication proxy so that we can well In order to configure or have the ICE and Duo integration, we need to have an authentication proxy. And um, this will give us the ability to add in that secondary authentication from Cisco Duo. It's a lightweight, lightweight application installed on a machine within your environment. Um, and again, in terms of support, um, there's different machines that the, the proxy can be installed on, so do check uh, the supported documentation, again, if you are looking at following along. Inline enrollment of users is not supported, so that means essentially if you have uh, users within Duo or synchronized between your Active Directory or however you've added them, um, if that user is not enrolled uh, doesn't have a device enrolled um, this uh, application will, does not support that so the user won't be prompted to uh, auto enroll uh, or self enroll if you like um, if it's the first time they are accessing the the application so it's important to make sure that um, if a user or if the users uh, that are going to be using this method for device administration uh, need to uh, they need to make sure that they have the other devices have been enrolled as well and we'll take a look at that in the demonstration because I have got a user that's not enrolled yet so we will need to do that the authentication proxy should be allowed to communicate on TCP 443 for dual services so that proxy will call out to dual uh, services um, in order to uh, initiate and um, control that, that flow of a TCP 443 so it's important if you have got a firewall um, or other access control methods in place between the authentication proxy and uh, outbound to the internet that the authentication proxy machine is uh, permitted access on TCP 443 within Cisco ICE uh, Duo is configured as a radius token server and we'll take a look at the uh, communication flow and how that works so this method actually supports um, we're using an application that's already available and again we'll take a look at that in Duo um, but the, this method supports device administration using TACAX or radius as well so it's not just limited to uh, radius and in fact in this demonstration today we will be using uh, TACAX. Configuration steps are uh, pretty straightforward. 
Um, so the first step is really to access the Duo admin panel and uh, configure, well, add and configure the, the Radius application. Um, and we'll take a look at that, as I say, because there is uh, an application already available. Uh, once you've done that, we need to download and install and configure the authentication proxy. And then we'll turn to ICE and we'll configure the elements within ICE. And then lastly, we'll test the deployment just to make sure that it all works as it should. For my lab setup today, I'm using Microsoft Server 2019. That's going to be my Active Directory uh, domain controller. And uh, in this lab, actually, I've put the authentication proxy on there as well. Um, just so I didn't have to have another device. You don't have to do that. You can, um, you know, install the authentication proxy on on another supported device. Um, all you would do is just point the um, the, the lookup for Active Directory to, uh, if you are using Active Directory, that is to the the actual server. Using Cisco Duo, of course, for the multi-factor authentication. We've got Cisco Ice 2.6 in there. I've got a CSR 1000V and that is for the testing of the TACAX authentication and then we've got the 2FA device which is going to be used to uh, accept that um, secondary authentication. So when we look at the actual floor and how it works I wanted to kind of, uh, I created this just to give you more of an idea of how it works. Um, so left to right, so if we look at the left hand side where we've got the management PC, we're going to uh, create an, uh, an SSH session to the CSR1000V. That CSR1000V which is already configured uh, with uh, to uh, for TACAX authentication, will send that request, that TACAX uh, request to Cisco ICE because it's configured to point to Cisco ICE and then ICE is configured um, to query the Active Directory uh, but in this case we're putting Duo in the middle of that so that, um, that TACAX authentication request when it gets to ICE it sends change to uh, Radius authentication access request uh, which then goes to, once configured, goes to the Duo proxy and that carries out the uh, primary authentication against Active Directory and the result is returned. Once that result's returned to ICE, um, the well, as that result's being returned to ICE, the uh, Duo proxy, authentication proxy, will start the secondary authentication using uh, TCP 443. So that will go out to the uh, Duo Cloud uh, services and then that will then contact the enroll user uh, and the device that's to firm the secondary authentication for the two-factor authentication. So we've got the Android uh, depiction of an Android device there in this case. Um, that user then will uh, accept, if it's a legitimate request, accept that secondary authentication from Duo. That will go back to the cloud. Duo then will respond to say, yep, yeah, that's successful to the proxy. The radius as access accept is then sent to ICE and then ICE uh, follows on uh, with that radius uh, or TACAX in our case access accept as well to the CSR and then the user has got that um, access to the CSR then and again we're going to take a look in the demonstration this is um, you know effectively what the setup looks like today so we'll jump in um, and this is the duo dashboard um, so like I say, I have got a user, so if I just click on users here, we can see that I've got WizKid demo, and we can see that um, nothing's enrolled. In fact, we can see at the top here, not enrolled, and you can even click on that, and it'll tell you uh, which users dot, uh, are not enrolled. So this is a brand new user. Uh, we're going to um, send, uh, because it does, doesn't support inline enrollment, we're going to send... Um, 
uh, an enrollment email which we can do by click on on, on here we've got an email address assigned um, so we'll do this first actually so we'll send out the uh, the enrollment email to this user so if I just click that the enrollment code has now been sent so let's get open our Android device now which is here you can see on here I've already got the duo mobile uh, application installed um, so if we just open the email we should have the, yeah you can see already we've got the duo security enrollment here um, so what we'll do now gives you um, a link here so that we can enroll so we'll just click on that and then we'll do start setup and we are adding even though it says mobile phone recommended on this device uh, it's a tablet so we'll use this tablet um, we've got duo mobile installed so I'll just select that um, finish by connecting to duo mobile so we'll just click on that and that should open then the application and you can see now it's open the application it says add an account and we can see that it's been added there successfully so this device is now uh, enrolled for that particular user now we'll come back to this because we'll need this layer on while we're testing but now if we just go back to users in duo we can see that we we now have two total users and non uh, not enrolled so we can see that uh, across or against the user we can see under phones uh, phones or tablets we can see that it's got the uh, with one device assigned to it um, and we can see here uh, the device that it has assigned to it uh, we can see we're using a, a virtual uh, tablet if you like and we can see the Android version etc um, so that's all good we've got that set up now uh, ready to use as a 2FA device against that user so when we want to use um, Duo multi-factor authentication in line with Cisco Eyes to um, secure device administration access, if we just go to applications, and I've got two already, um, and this is the one we're actually going to use today. It's already uh, configured, but what you would normally do if you wanted to uh, follow along is you would click up top here protect an application and then he, in here you would type in radius um, so you got the the radius here and then you would um, click to click to secure um, so if we just go back to applications we've got our radius one here when you're on here, um, if you are sharing your screen with somebody or doing some sort of demonstration, do keep or try to keep um, definitely the secret key you want to keep secret. As it says here, don't write down your secret key or share it with anyone. Uh, but if you can, make sure you um, don't share the integration key or the API um, information. When you configure it, you can add in uh, policies like you can see here I've added in a, a test policy um, or you can stick with the, the global policy and within these policies um, let me just click edit on here this isn't our main focus today um, so I won't spend too much time on this but within the policy we can see that new users require enrollment um, so prompt to enroll users for, uh, to enroll whenever possible because as I say this application doesn't support inline enrollment um, basically the, the user wouldn't be able to access um, until enrolled we are enforcing 2FA unless there's a superseding policy in this case uh, this test policy that I created is the top policy so uh, the global policy um, is, is below this and then you essentially just go through all the settings and, and configure them to what you would like in your environment again I'm not going to focus on all of this today because um, 
there is a few different settings and things we can do I just want to mainly focus on the integration between Cisco ICE and, uh, and Duo nevertheless once you've done that save your policy and then you've got your policy configured um, and, and leave this um, application section open because you will need the integration key, the secret key and the API host name uh, for the authentication proxy. For the authentication proxy as well, um, you will need to, if you've not downloaded the authentication proxy, you will need to um, download the, the authentication proxy itself. So. If to do that, if you don't know where to get that from, if you just click on here where you see Radius Documentation, you know, open a new section. And as I said, the configuration steps in here as well. Um, I, I strongly recommend you, you look at this as well. And if you just go to install a Duo Authentication Proxy, and you've got the option here for Windows, Linux. Um, so you can download it here for uh, EXE for, for Windows. Um, as well, so go there, install a proxy on your machine, the machine of your choice, and then let's go back to this. And then, once we've in installed the authentication proxy, what you would want to do is on that particular device, you need to open up the um, just get to it, just give me a second. I'll So what you would want to do then is um, you need to open up the authentic uh, or auth proxy.cfg file and that's located if we just go to auth proxy log actually is not what we need to look at yet we'll we'll look at that after so what we need to do is actually in uh, in the comp file so uh, c or n f file uh, the auth proxy config here is the uh, file that we need to edit and then in the log is where we'll see the logs for the actual auth proxy uh, as well and then we need to um, I at this point I would say refer to the uh, radius uh, documentation that we just had open but I'll just give you a quick overview of kind of what configuration you need in there so um, this is mine and this is already done so if you have uh, Active Directory as well you need to make sure that you have populated this and again this is in the documentation so do take a look at that it's essentially uh, where your uh, AD server uh, or hostname the service account and the password for that service account um, and the search uh, DN as well. Um, so if you put that into your auth proxy CFG file as it is displayed and as it recommends in the uh, documentation, that's step one done. Step two, now we need to um, focus on these two sections here. So we've got the radius server uh, auto, auto append, and in here, um, you would need to put in the IKS key and API host name. So when I say IKS key, we're referring back now to the um, I key here or integration key and S key or secret key here and then API host name. So they would need to be populated within uh, the config in this section here. And then radius IP address is going to be your um, ICE um, device. If you've got multiple PSNs, if you've got a distributed deployment, then you will have multiple of these. But in this demonstration, I'm only using one. And then you need to make sure your radius secret is populated, which will also need to match uh, within Cisco ICE. And we can, we'll take a look at that as well. And then lastly, we need uh, Radius Server Challenge in here. And um, again, the IKS key and API hostname, they're going to be the same because we're using the same uh, application. And again, uh, Radius IP address, if you've got multiple PSNs then you'll have multiple um, IPs. Um, and then the Radius Secret again needs to uh, be the same.
So once you've done that on your authentication proxy and you've saved it successfully, what you'll need to do then is you'll need to, any changes to the auth proxy CFG file, uh, it does require a, uh, a restart of the, of the service. So what you'll need to do is, uh, I should have it open already. So you see here, if we, we've got two commands here really that you can use. So you've got net stop, uh, duo off proxy and that would stop the service and then net stop start duo off proxy which would then start the service and providing there's nothing wrong uh, with the configuration in there you'll see um, the output once started as you can see here saying that there's no problems no issues detected etc etc and you can also if you wanted to uh, look at that that uh, the output from that if you click on the log file for connectivity tool you'd get the same output in here so you can always um, you know if you close that already you can always take a look in in, in there so I would uh, strongly recommend just just keeping that in the back of your head okay cool So once that's done and we're satisfied with the authentication proxy configuration, we need to um, we need to go across to ICE. So if I just open and log into ICE now, What we need to do is we need to go. Um, we need to make sure first and foremost that the the device that you or the devices that you're accessing um, are already in network devices and configured with the relevant secret key uh, that's required. If you're satisfied with the devices for device administration, let's go across to external identity sources. And then what we would do is we would go down to uh, radius token. You can see I've got dual added already, but if this wasn't the case, what we would do is um, you'd add a new one, um, give it a name, go across the connection, add the host IP address uh, for the uh, proxy along with the shared secret key that we specified. Again, like I said, that needs to be the same as on the uh, authentication proxy and we should be okay with the rest of the authentication and authorization settings there. So once that's done what we should do is or rec what I recommend doing is going to identity source sequences and um, as you can see I've created a new one here called Duo AD and if we just go into that we can see that for my identity sources, I'm going to use uh, Duo first um, and then my Active Directory server as well. So um, if what we're going to do under, under, under advanced search settings as well, we're going to continue on to the next step if the user wasn't found in, in the first uh, sequence as well. So we can, we can leave that on. Um, so essentially, you know, we're going to be able to... Um, get rid of the uh, the use of all the unnecessary uh, identity source sequences that we don't need in this uh, particular instance. So once that's done, what we need to do now is we need to go across to device administration and if we go to device admin policy sets, you can see I've got one configured here. It's just a test one again in your environment, especially if it's a live environment, it's going to be a lot more um, well, it's going to be different to this, put it that way. Um, but in this case, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. I think I'm actually using, um, yeah, I think I'm actually using this one, TACAX, actually. So there we go. Yeah, default TACAX policy is the one that I'm using. Um, so we'll just, we're using the default in this particular case, as I say, if you're uh, using a real environment, it's probably going to be different. But for the uh, server sequences or identity source sequence, we're going to use the identity source sequence that we just created, which is the duo underscore AD. And then your authorization profiles will obviously differ um, 
based on you know what you want to match. I think the main thing here is that we need to make sure that we do in uh, we check in uh, Duo and uh, Active Directory. And that's pretty much it in terms of virus when you've done that. So when, when you've done that, what we can do is we can actually test that authentication. So we can go to TACAX Live Logs. You can see that there's no in there at the minute. Now, let me just get open this device. Uh, I think that's the one there. So now if I go to, well, let's just duplicate this session. Right, so if I start to log in now, uh, this username is also in Active Directory. That's another thing that I should point out. It needs to uh, need to match in uh, in the external directory as well. Um, so this name matches in my AD as well. If I just go back to this device now, and I type, uh, let's go back to ICE as well. Wizkid demo and password I think that were right nope there we go so now you can see um, the options here so we've only got one option so we, we're gonna passcode uh, well we can either enter the passcode that we got on our duo app or we can use the uh, duo push by selecting one so now if I just press one and enter and then if we go to our Android device now okay so you can see that request request there um, I took too long so but it says it, it does say approve but if you actually look on the device itself I took too long so what I'll do um, I mean you can change the timeout settings uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'll just enter the uh, password again and again, I'll do the duo push, and there we go. We can see that the re request has come through. So if we click on that, we approve that, and if approved, we go back to uh, the the application, and we'll go with the push again. And if we open that, we can see the push has come through. We we'll approve that. Approved. And now you can see, um, are we in there? No, we're not in there. So let's see what that uh, was there. So that allowed, that was fine. Authentication succeeded. Um, and we can see it selected the authorization profile the authentication profile so maybe it timed out I'll try it again um, authentication against radius token server failed okay so let's just try it again we start and always kid demo push and then we'll just get that up here accept that is that going to allow us in so let's log in again with kid demo I think I got that one wrong fat fingers there we go, we'll do the push, we get the push through here, approve, access denied still, but then we've got the accept here. Against the radius, to radius token server failed. Um, just and then we've got the accept here default so that's fine so let me just double check the external identity sources I 
Oh, that's fine. Nothing's been changed there. Um, I don't know if we'll see any on bots. We've got the duo pushes, which are showing as okay. I'm not saying approved, but then we're still getting the uh, the access denied. Okay, so what I will do. Try that. So what we'll do now is I'll just try again. So if I just restart that session, uh, let's get demo. We'll try one again for the push. If not, I'll try the passcode actually. Access denied. So what I'll do is I'll do, and then what we'll do is we'll add the passcode. So if you want to add the passcode, you can do that that way. So we just type it in. So one two nine nine one two, and that one seemed to have worked actually. So we're in. So you can see now I'm in the uh, CSR device as well. So if we just look back, that's interesting. So we, for whatever reason, the push didn't seem to work on that device. Um, well, let's refresh. We can see here that we've got two that are successful. So we could pass the authentication. We can see the username. Yeah, so that looks fine. You can see we're using TACAX TCP49. So that's interesting. I've not come across that before. Maybe it's because of the um, the Android device I'm using. In fact, let's check the, um, the no denied ones there, I don't think. Yeah, that's not from uh today yeah that's the other device so another thing here as well with the reports are quite good actually on um duo so you can you know delve into a lot of things you can see here you've got the timestamp of the uh, two-factor authentication we can see whether it's been allowed uh, or denied we can see the username we can see the application that they're using uh, location um, you can usually see, can't see that. Um, I think that's something to do with the actual virtual device I'm using. And we can see, um, we can see that the one that actually worked just then was the dual passcode. We entered the passcode. We can see, you know, you know what sort of second off uh, factor method is being used. Um, so we've got dual push, uh, mobile passcode, and there's all, all sort of methods as well. Um, if we just actually look at the 2FA device, now it could be, yeah, no passcode. Uh, it's quite good in the, this respect because you can see here as well, we can see uh, the information of the device, we can see the device security uh, and uh, what that looks like, what the posture looks like. Um, so we can see that this disk is unencrypted. We can see that it says it's been tampered with and you can find out more about what that is there. Um, and we can see that there's no passcode set there. Uh, nevertheless, if we just go back to device insights, we could, you know, we've got information here. Um, if we look at mobile devices, you can drill down into mobile devices themselves. So we can get the posture, status, what that looks like here. We can see one tampered, one not tampered. Um, so we've got quite a bit of information we can kind of delve into here. And again, if you clicked on that, you'll you know, get brought to that specific device. 
uh, where you can actually click on it and see which users are assigned to uh, this particular device as well. So that's um, a quick overview as well of Duo. Um, but you know, as you can see here, we can we're on the device now. We can uh, log into that device using Duo, and we can see if we look at the authentication logs. Um, the Duo push should work. It might be something to do with the actual uh, virtual device that I am using. It does work on. Uh, my phone, but on the actual log, you can see that we've got the um, uh, the authentication, which is uh, passed here for that uh, particular uh, user, Wizkid demo, and you can see the steps that have been taken here as well, uh, which is quite useful to look at as well. You can see that the Radius Token uh, Token Identity Store uh, is using uh, Duo. And we can see, you know, ultimately the end result is to um, is to pass uh, that authentication. So that's how you use uh, or integrate Cisco Ice and Cisco Duo for multi-factor authentication uh, when using device administration. There is other use cases that can do the same thing. Uh, this is just one use case, so. Uh, do bear that in mind and if you're interested in other use cases do check out uh, the duo website where you can uh, have a look a little bit more into that but um, that gives you an idea of the power of duo what you can do with duo how we can integrate it with cisco ice and like i said it meets the uh, blueprint for the cci security uh, topic 4.16 We'll probably explore some more of Duo in more detail and probably do some other integrations in the uh, in the near future. Uh, so do look out for those if you are interested in those. Um, subscribe, uh, leave a like, comment, or comment and let me know what you would like to see. Uh, as I say, there is 4.17 in the CCIE security blueprint that focuses specifically around access control and single sign-on. Uh, using Cisco Duo as well. Um, so we'll, in that particular topic, we'll be looking a little bit more around the uh, access control features that uh, Duo has and also the single sign-on element uh, using SAML as well. Well, that's it for this video. Again, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do leave a uh, thumbs up, uh, comments if you've got them, and please do show your support by subscribing as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you.